Hi there, thanks for joining. Whenever you want to start a new painting, there is one question that's very important to ask yourself before you even begin sketching. And that is, what kind of background color do I want on my canvas or paper? So I thought in this video, I really want to show the difference eh, between working on a white canvas or just a toned gray canvas or more of a warm kind of canvas or a cooler canvas. So I've already done some preparation. I've primed these canvases with gesso. Gesso is a primer for acrylics and you can put that on a canvas, but you can put it on uh, paper as well. It provides for a, a way better painting experience, especially on paper because paper is very absorbent. And if you apply a layer of gesso diluted with a little bit of water, then the coat of gesso prevents the moisture from the acrylics of, uh, of being absorbed too quickly. So it increases the drying time and you get more mileage out of your acrylics. That's great. But usually gesso is white. You can also buy gesso in gray or in transparent or uh, black. But if you, by white gesso, you can give it a color yourself. So you can add, for instance, gray. I've done that for this paper. On this paper, I've added a little bit of burnt sienna to the gesso. And on this paper, I added a little bit of cyan. Then I tried to put uh, kind of similar sketches on all four of the papers. And already you can see one big benefit of working on a colored or toned ground. In the sketching phase, I was already able on these toned grounds to uh, play with light and dark a little bit. I've used a little bit of white eh? and you can clearly see these white sketched clouds on these colored canvases. On a white canvas, I cannot paint with white. So I had to put on some outlines. On all these three canvases, uh, I have more options. I can work from light to dark and from dark to light already in the sketching phase. Uh, also, by the way, uh, on this paper, I also added gesso, but I just used pure white gesso. But I always put gesso on paper because otherwise the paint dries way too quickly. And now I'm going to make some simple landscape paintings on top of this. Um, just to show the effect of the process. These paintings won't be very extensive because I don't have time to make four landscape paintings, of course. And most important, maybe you get inspired to try different background colors yourself as well, because it's also very fun to do. So I'll start with the sky and uh, now there we go already. You see blue on a burnt sienna background. You see that pops off the canvas because blue is a very contrasting color to the burnt sienna. When you look at the color wheel, then you can see that straight away blue and red are rather far apart of, of each other. Eh? That's a contrasting color. So when you're painting, you can get overwhelmed by that contrast. It's hard to judge the color that way, but that doesn't matter because you judge the color in the color mixing process. So you mix a color and you check it with the subject. So in general, the colors on your palette will be okay. Only when everything is covered, then you can start worrying about the colors, the contrast and, and stuff like that. So now we head over to the white paper. And there you see another funny thing happening. The same blue color that I used in the upper painting, in the uh, burnt sienna painting, the blue is exactly the same as in the painting with the burnt sienna background, but on white it looks way darker. You see, and that's the problem with white. And it's not to say that one thing is bad and the other one is not as better. It's different and you can choose whatever you prefer. So there isn't a right and wrong in art. It's all a matter of taste as well. Okay, now I head over to the gray one and you see on the gray one, the contrast between the sky and the, the, the gray is, uh, is, is way smaller than on white, of course. So that doesn't look that shocking. You see, it's rather harmonious still. So in general, gray is always a safe choice, I, I think. And uh, personally, I paint on gray a lot. 
because it isn't blinding and you can work from dark to light and from light to dark and it's uh, rather good for judging colors and values. But it depends, there are situations when it's more handy to use a blue background for instance when you've got a, a photograph or a subject with a lot of blue in it, yes, then of course it's easier to use a blue background. And yeah, surprise, surprise, blue on blue. <laughs> yeah, you can hardly see uh, what I do, of course, that's logical. So that's a way different story than working on red, on burnt sienna. Now, then I'll quickly fill in the clouds as well, it's all standard stuff, of course. Yeah, but you see, at this stage, every background has another effect. You can clearly see that now. And it's not that one is better than the other, it's all different. So now I've started blocking in some grass. Uh, first a little bit of these light parts. And I try to do it about the same in every uh, painting. And of course I also wanted to do it rather quickly because it's more about what happens then about the paintings themselves. So you see now and uh, now it looks really really weird. When we only had the sky it uh, it didn't it didn't look that weird but now it's starting to look very weird. Now I need these light parts to dry a little bit so I quickly head over to some dark parts and the, these dark parts I just block in some dark areas I want to cover with lighter values later. I want to build on these dark parts. And so it's good to do them first. And then while I do the rest of the grass, the dark parts can uh, dry so that I can paint on top of them later on. So it's a little bit of planning. And sometimes people say acrylics dry so fast, but if you've premixed colors on your palette, then sometimes acrylics dry even too slow. For quick studies like this it's really ideal acrylics. So now I start adding other green uh, colors, all kinds of colors and uh, yeah just to fill in the background. And now these darker areas are dry, I can put other colors on top of them. So we get an interplay and between these layers. Okay, and now I add some dark dots over here and uh, well, and hopefully I can make them look like trees in next layer. So <laughs> first I'll drop in some dark parts and on top of that I'll put lighter layers later on. But yeah, you have to have some kind of base. Huh, where are my paper towels? And it's always handy to have dark layers first to put the light layers on top of that. So now I do the lighter parts on top of that. And now it's a funny stage you see because the, uh, the two paintings on top they look already rather good because the burnt sienna goes very well with that landscape and the grey as well. Uh, and, uh, but uh, at the bottom the white and the blue look a little bit strange. And that's just situational because in, in other situations, for instance in a snowy landscape, the white and the blue ones might have looked very logical eh, at this stage. But, and, the, and then the burnt sienna and the grey maybe would have seemed m m less logical. So it's not, never to say that one thing is better than the other. Now, last thing I do of course is add that dirt road. And uh, I build it with a little bit of light value first and then I gradually build a little bit. And now you see that when you've covered everything with paint, with color, uh, on all four grounds, it rather looks the same. Eh? So uh, they are slightly different and also the ground tone is a little bit different eh, uh, at some spots. 
But all in all, now you're at, in a phase that you can say, okay, everything starts working together. And at this stage, you can start correcting things like colors and tonal values and adding details and stuff like that. That's only now is that possible because earlier that wasn't possible because when you don't see the total picture of colors, then your painting looks strange and you cannot judge properly what happens. <laughs> you see, the results are all rather the same in the end, but there is a slight different feel to it. This one, if you see it in isolation, it is a little bit, it has more of a cool undertone. This one is slightly more warm. And these two are rather neutral on white and on gray, uh, I would say. But there is a difference, and that is that if you zoom in on the white one, this, so with the white uh, ground, then you see that I've missed some spots. Oei, oei, oei. But uh, you see white shining through, and that looks a little bit as though it is unfinished. And if I zoom in on the gray one, hey, you see those kind of spots as well, but they don't matter that much. That gray color unifies the, the whole picture. And same goes, by the way, for the red one and the blue one. And in the blue one, of course, the color is a little bit, yeah, way off. And in the red one, of course, the red undertone is also there in the total of the picture. So that harmonizes quite well. The blue one st stands out a little bit more, but even then, huh, it looks as though that is done on purpose, as though it is artful huh, in some way. So that gives a very nice kind of effect way different than the white one. The white one has more of that effect of an unfinished painting. In this case, I like the gray and the red one most, but there are also times that I have myself used a blue background. For instance, this painting, I, I knew beforehand that it uh, had to contain a lot of blue, a purplish blue, so why not just filled the whole canvas with that color. And here are some other examples of paintings I did and uh, where I used a totally different color, background color, just for convenience, because I already knew that color had to be there uh, a lot in the painting uh, as a kind of unifying color. So then, of course, why not use that color? But I could also have chosen a very contrasting color to that. That's a matter of choice. But I hope this helps a little bit and also that you see that although it is uh, kind of fun to paint on a toned or colored background, it, it, it isn't that easy sometimes because your color judgment can get confusing when you work on a, uh, especially when you work on very vivid background colors. So I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.